more than lunch, you know. One more with feeling. Go oh, is two there are. No more, no less. A master and an apprentice. But which one was destroyed? The master or the apprentice? Take more time with that elbow. Pop. Yeah. Don't make it so close. Yeah, good. Star Wars, they said I said too fucking right. <laughs> With this film, the fighting had to be very strong. But what I had in mind after watching the first Star Wars films was that, um, was that you would see that they had studied every single style. Swordplay, you know, from Epe to Kendo. That's what we've gone for. I like that there. That's strong in there, isn't it? You know, the Kendo movies. <laughs> Since they had chosen such a short-range weapon, they would have to be so good if they're up against ray guns and lasers. But I think it just needed to be much more gritty than it was, you know, much more scary than it was, much faster and much stronger. They have to be constantly in, in check. There's no room for error in any of the fights. You won't see it because they're so fast, but if you slow them down and freeze frame them, they can only parry there, or they can only attack there. The moves are so natural, uh, or so correct, it's the only place they can be. The first time we were rehearsing these fights, of course, we, we started making the sound effects of the lightsabers, like, woo, 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 woo. you know, we kind of looked at each other and I thought, okay, we have to stop that, you know. It's interesting, I mean, I've done maybe four or five films where I've had to do quite serious sword fighting. So I have a kind of a grounding in it. Normally with, like, sabers, you have to kind of hack, you know, and, put weight behind it, but with these things it's very, very gentle, kind of smooth and fluid. Fast movements, but very kind of gentle at the same time. And when they use their lightsabers, they're, uh, they're extensions of themselves, you know? I love having my lightsaber. It's the most exciting thing I've ever known, to have my own lightsaber. It's cool. There's not many people can say that they have one. <laughs> I mean, you're almost straight out of that. Once that's gone in, you're almost you're right. spinning and chopping because he just steps in. Right. So what is it again from yeah, there? Yeah, just that from the luck. From... We were blessed with both you and, and Liam. Um, I think they understood that it had been written almost as dialogue, and so it was, they could relate to it very easily. And it's got such a particular style of its own, really. The, the lightsaber fights. So I don't know, um, it just all came together. I love it, I've really enjoyed it. Ewan picked it up in a flash, and um, now it's, it's, I think, faster than any of us. So this is a, this is a Ewan McGregor lightsaber. <laughs> we have to get, it goes through one fight. We're gonna have to get stronger ones made. They don't make lightsabers like they used to. 
Liam has a, has a beautiful style, a powerful. Yeah, that's it. That's what makes it work. He's fantastic at it. I said I wanted a faster version of what the other movies were, more energetic version. And that's basically what he gave me. And I think the key to it was is that we had a good villain who was a great fighter. I always wanted to fly when I was a kid. I wanted to be like the guys in the movies. So that's how I started my martial arts. I found Darth Maul, and he's being played by a guy called Ray Park. And he's very good in um, uh, like kendo and martial arts, and, and he's a brilliant gymnast. I mean, you know, he's better than I am. We actually cast a villain who was a sword fighter. You know, when you have one of the characters who actually knows what he's doing and is really an expert at it, it, um, it definitely ups the ante for all the other actors to do their thing uh, as well as they can. And uh, I think it makes a big difference on the screen. We could see immediately he had the look, he had all the physical skill, um, he was incredibly disciplined, and the amount of work that this guy did was phenomenal. I mean, he put everything. He spent you know, 20 hours at the studio every day, the hatred that comes out of his eyes. There's no question that he is the serious bad guy. The um, makeup, which was beautifully done, instantly shows you someone of, of, of who is a, a real menace. The look of um, Darth Maul, the Sith Lord, I think it's cool. I think the makeup and the horns and the lenses and the teeth, you just can't help being naughty, you know, just help being that character. I think we all have a bit of a dark side in us, and so I just try and bring that out of myself when I play the character. Do it slow. You go like that. Now you gotta kick it. You... Now I don't even think he's hard. And you see the actor struggling in the fight sequences. With three months of really hard work, they came up with a wonderful set of choreographic fights that uh, were really remarkable and fantastic. They've got to be down there doing it. You've got to get the sense of, of peril or threat. You know, we want them to win. They're our, our heroes, and so we need to be there with them. are so natural uh, or so correct it's the only place they can be since they had chosen such a short range weapon they would have to be so good if they're up against ray guns and lasers so they would have studied every great sword fighting style and come up with a kind of mixture of kendo and samurai and every sword style there's ever been and you know a bit of tennis and a bit of tree chopping everything that you could swing at you can clock it super fast right like that so as he as he comes in there you go well, that's good because we've never done yeah. that one before. Yeah. Cool. So. When we train actors, we would write a fight that may be a minute long, but that'll be in five or six sections of six or seven moves only. So then we just go through really very slowly and then just start picking up the pace. Welcome to this process of making Star Wars. Our director is back in the booth here somewhere is George Lucas. And uh, I'll thank you for him also. Glad you're here. <laughs> We're going to begin today's work with the woodwind setting at 33. Just winds, please, 33. One, <coughs> two, three. <coughs> You know what I think? I think I would like better if the contra plays first and third beat only, and short. Do it again, please, people. One, two, three, four. On the original films, I was looking for somebody who really understood classical movie scoring, and I was talking to Steve Spielberg about it, and he had worked with Johnny on 
Jaws and said, you know, this is the man for you. He's perfect. He really understands that medium. And once I worked with him on Star Wars, you know, I wouldn't have anybody else doing it. I've been uniquely fortunate to continue to accompany George on this great journey that he's on, which seems now to be a, a life's work journey. He probably rang me a year ago to tell me that, that the time was coming, that his script was, was going to be ready, and that he was about ready to shoot the film, and that the music would be needed by such and such a time in the calendar. And then I would get another phone call two or three months later, and he would fix a spotting date where we go in, in a dark room and talk about where the music is going to go and what it should do, etc. Then it goes from that into religioso force. Yeah. It just has to be something that kind of says, we're fighting back now. But I think we need to keep that yeah. kind of fighting back theme going to, to keep the energy up. The great sword fight at the end of the film the decision to make that choral was just the result of my thinking that it should be, that it should have a kind of ritualistic or quasi-religious feeling to it, if you like. And that the introduction of a chorus might be just the thing. One, two, three. People, I think always kura, ratama, all of that. I've chosen these Sanskrit words because of the, the quality of the vowels. Do it again, please. See how pure a choral sound you can get. Don't force it. So, so. Give us a sense that we're in a big temple. It's a wonderful piece of music with the choir and the whole. It's very operatic and and very much like Star Wars. Johnny really understands movie music. It's not just music laid in there, it actually tells the story. There's a lot of clashing and banging and Ben Bird in there. Yeah. So if we're going between takes and stuff, it'll be hidden pretty well. The only concern that, I, that, that one might have is that you may want a version without the chorus, but I don't know if you even want to think of contemplating. No, I that. love the chorus. It gives it that churchy. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it's going to work. I mean, you didn't realize this, but it really goes into the third film very well, and it's it's. I think it'll be an important thing to reprise. I mean, it has a, that definitely has the, the quality of the inevitable fate of doom, you know, with larger hands at work. Okay. Chorus, um, one second, Sean. Oh, we have a pitch, please. And quiet with the pages. 33, 1, 2, sing. <laughs> There's 
and see, see if we can have the sound less disturbed by still improved intonation. You'll hear a lot of beating in that. I will take it, please. 6M7, new, take 106.